Square Enix has showered us with a load of new gameplay details and screenshots for Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, including information about the regions we'll be travelling through and characters we'll be meeting. But for this video I wanted to cover the details they've provided about the various battle difficulty modes, materia development, and one of the summons that we'll be able to call upon, namely Kujata. Let's start with the battle modes, as it's been confirmed that both the active and classic battle modes will return in Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, again allowing you to choose between fast paced action or slower paced decision making. When it comes to the actual settings for the difficulty of battles, the first two, easy and normal, are exactly what you'd expect, but a new third setting has also been added, named Dynamic which sounds especially interesting. When this dynamic setting is selected, enemies in the game will scale to your level. The official press release from Square Enix states that, in the newly added dynamic difficulty, enemies grow stronger as your characters do. Perfect for players who crave constant challenge. Given that we'll be travelling back and forth between larger areas than those that were present in Final Fantasy VII Remake, the dynamic difficulty mode should mean that we aren't just crushing lower level enemies on our way through old areas. With this in mind, it might be a welcome addition if you want to push the combat system at all times. We also got more of an insight into Kujata, a summon which featured in the original Final Fantasy VII, but not in Remake, which is described as a bovine deity that charges around the battlefield wielding the power of fire, ice and lightning and which can throw enemies with its enormous horns while unleashing magical attacks that capitalise on their weaknesses. From the images provided, Kujata looks like it will be pretty damn awesome to use in battle, while hopefully proving to be effective at the same time, given that it is a multi-elemental summon that can unleash abilities such as Blazing Horn, which launches a concentrated burst of fiery energy at an enemy, and Tri Disaster, a powerful wide-range attack imbued with the powers of fire, ice and lightning, sure to hit many foes right where it hurts. Also, speaking of multi-elemental attacks, one thing that jumped out was the fire and ice materia listed under materia development, which seemingly allows us to use fire and ice magic in a simultaneous move. Judging by the other materia included on the screenshot provided, namely auto cast materia, morph materia, and auto-unique ability materia. It definitely looks like there is going to be huge scope for developing your own fighting style when it comes to laying into the enemies in Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. On this note, Square Enix said in the release that, assisting Chadley with his world-spanning research will allow you to accrue data points, which are essential when it comes to developing new materia. Of these new materia, some will offer access to spells of multiple affinities, while others grant the use of unique abilities, all of which are sure to prove useful against even the most formidable foes. And given the size of Final Fantasy VII Rebirth and the newly revealed dynamic battle setting, there are sure to be many, many formidable enemies to face. Which of the newly revealed details about Final Fantasy VII Rebirth did you find most interesting? And how excited are you about the new dynamic battle settings, and the chance to develop powerful new materia that wasn't seen in the previous game? Drop your comments below. Also, if you enjoyed this video, then please do give it a thumbs up and subscribe as well, if you aren't already. Finally, if you want to see more interesting videos about all things Final Fantasy, it would be amazing if you could support me on Patreon. I'll leave the link in the description if you want to check it out. Anyway, until next time, thank you for watching.